Hi, I'm back here again in SwiftPause back office and in this video I'm going to be talking a little bit more about instructional categories and products. Um, so in this video I'm going to go over um, several of the, the things that we touched on in previous videos. So if I am going a little bit too quickly for you, go ahead and check those videos out um, if you want more details. I'm basically going to be rushing through creating an instructional uh, category um, a group, populating it with some products, and then linking those products on the um, on the keyboard designer. So I'm going to start here in products and category group setup. Now I've created a group called breakfast just down here, um, and that has some breakfast items in it. But I'd like to create another group for um, instructional. Uh, products that are going to go um, along with those products. So I'll create a new group here. I'll make that 62 just to follow along with my numbering scheme and I'll call it breakfast instruction. Assign my master group save my changes. I'll also want a category and unlike I've done in previous categories I'm going to assign this as an instructional category and I'll show you the significance of that when we come to populate the keyboard save my changes and I now have a brand new category which I can populate with product so I'll go ahead and do that now in products and product records I'm going to create a new product and I've already decided on the um, product code range that I'm going to use which is 1650 and onwards um, and these are going to be condiments to go along with the toast products that I've already created. Um, so they're just going to be different possible uh, condiments that a customer might choose. So I'm going to create my first one here and call it butter. Hit my short description to populate that field and change my PLU to match my product code. Again, not completely necessary, but that's just how I like to do it. I'll next assign my cell category, which is going to be breakfast instructions, and my report group, which is also breakfast instructions. I'm not going to have a price on these items. Um, some later on I will have prices just to demonstrate how that works. and that's that product created. Now I'm going to duplicate this product using the little drop down next to new and hit copy product and it's going to create an identical product with the next available product code which is exactly what I want. And here I'm going to use a special kind of honey. Eucalyptus honey, which is quite expensive and so I'm going to add um, a price to this condiment. I'm just going to make that 20 cents, so 0 0.2 for whichever price levels I happen to be using. Save my changes. Uh, and that's about it for the products that I'll be using. So now I'll navigate to my keyboard. 
in Connect Touch Settings, Keyboards, and open the one that I'll be working with. I've already created a breakfast layout and linked to it using this key down here. And so I'll navigate to it from the drop down at the top of the screen. And you can see that I have my previously created juice products here as well as my toast products. Now using the um, quick button uh, search filters again um, if you can't see this panel you can show it by clicking on the quick buttons little tab there to expand out this, uh, this little screen. Um, using the search filters I'm just going to search for uh, breakfast instructions and there are the products that I have created. Now how do I want these to be available to the clerks? Um, I could put each individual one on its own key down here but I may want to handle it a different way. Um, for example, if I have all of my preserves or all of my condiments listed down here, a staff member may choose more than one or they might forget to choose one entirely. So I might want a way to um, prompt the staff member to choose the customer's preferred um, preserve. And I can do that using post links. So I'm going to delete that just by pressing delete on my keyboard and it's gone away. If I click on the farmhouse toast for example and then on post links, you'll see there's a few different ways that I can post link to these products. Uh, layout and category. There are different merits to using each. Uh, I sort of covered this in the previous video. Um, a layout will allow you to put whatever products you want onto a layout and a category will define um, all of the different products that are in that category. Um, I prefer to use the layout method just for this example um, but I don't have a, a layout to link to just yet so I'm going to create one, populate it and then link to it. So to create a new layout I click on layouts in the top menu, add a new layout and I'll call this breakfast condiments. Okay, and this is created and immediately taken me to the new layout that I've created. I'm going to remove these buttons because I'm not going to be using them. If I did choose to put them back, um, I can select link type special function and from the little ellipse choose home or return. Now I'm going to take all of my products here, all of my condiments, and populate the list here. Okay, so now I've populated my layout with all of the different condiments that I might use. Um, I've given them an appropriate color uh, and arranged them in the order that I want to see them. If I use my drop down here to navigate back to breakfast, now we can post link to that layout in, um, in a very specific way. So I'll start with the farmhouse toast and click on post link and by default my post link method is layout which is what I want and I'm going to add a link and in the drop down here I can choose which layout I want to link to in this case breakfast condiments. Over here very important um, you have minimum and maximum um, this will specify that the staff member must choose at least one and here um, the staff member can only choose a maximum of one. So I'm going to leave the minimum and maximum count as one and press OK. Save my changes and now I'll send those changes to the terminal. OK, here's my terminal with the update applied. I have the breakfast layout down the bottom here and I have my toast products listed here. If I click on the farmhouse toast it immediately post links to this layout where I have an option to choose a preserve. If I choose one of these it 
indents that product underneath the toast item um, and that's because it's set in an instructional category. If it were not set as instructional, it would not indent. Um, because it's indented, it will always follow this product, no matter how many more products I add in. Wherever this prints, the honey instruction will always follow the product that it's uh, called up underneath. If I go back to my farmhouse toast and choose the eucalyptus honey, um, you can see that the honey that doesn't have a price has nothing listed here, whereas this one does in fact have a price listed, which is exactly what we want to see. Now I've kind of decided that I might like the clerk to be able to choose two condiments. Um, for example, the customer w might want buttered toast with honey or whatever other combination there is. So I'd like to return to my layout designer and to my breakfast condiments layout. What I want to do here is add a return button using link type special function and link item return. And this is because the customer might not choose two items, um, they might only want one. So I'll demonstrate why I've done that now. If I navigate back to my breakfast layout and under the farmhouse toast, change my post link set up to a minimum of one and a maximum of two. And send those changes to the terminal. On my breakfast layout, if I choose farmhouse toast, I can choose up to two different condiments before it returns me to uh, the breakfast layout. If a customer orders the farmhouse toast and all they want is the eucalyptus honey, um, at this point it won't automatically return, but the clerk can uh, press the return button to bring it back to this screen and continue on. So I hope this video has given you a pretty good understanding of instructional categories and products um, and how the products behave at the POS as well as an understanding of how post links work. Um, post links are very, very uh, useful um, and can be linked uh, from any product on the POS to do a variety of different things. And you can have multiple post link events um, which we'll cover certainly in future videos. Anyway, I hope that video has been helpful to you. Um, as always, if there are any questions, go ahead and leave me a comment. And thanks for watching.